today's session is Watch Out, Mr. Spielberg, Developing Platform Independent Graphics and Movies. Good morning, James. You want to say hello? Hey, good morning, everybody. Glad to be here. How you doing, Lisa? I'm fabulous. Well, good, good. We've got Stephen Schneider and Tom Miller. Stephen, how you doing? I am doing well. Thank you very much. And Tom, our general manager of Your Tango, Tom Miller, who's a video and graphics uh, uh, expert. How you doing, Tom? Great. Good morning, everyone. We're really happy to have you here. I uh, appreciate uh, your time and, and showing up and helping us with this webinar. Well, Tom, are you ready? Stephen, are you ready? I'm ready. Good. No, good, good. And, and Lisa, too, because I've noticed that Stephen and Lisa have a particularly keen interest uh, in this agenda, or at least in talking with, uh, with Tom. So about this, we're going to be talking about universal video creation and, and video creation tips tricks and traps. I think I said that correctly this time. Uh, we're going to talk about you know, working with mobile devices a little bit, uh, some issues about content licensing, and putting together image and video libraries, just some general tips. So about us, we're CIW. We're your web and internet certification. We're a skills-based education standard, and we provide certification and courseware to people, to individuals, to institutions worldwide that teach internet skills, SEO, social media, web design, and development. And we put people on a lifelong learning path, not a vendor's product treadmill. We're vendor neutral. Uh, we use the best vendor applications that you can find at the best open source applications and teach people how to use them in business. We focus on job skills. And as a result, we're globally accepted with thousands of people certified worldwide. And the idea is that we help people prepare for their careers. So as you start out in the world with, uh, in the work world of CIW Web Foundations, we're way beyond literacy there. And then we move people throughout their careers as IT administrators, managers, executives, or throughout their education careers. CIW follows you along the way. Well, who are we? We already talked about uh, Lisa who uh, is our MC, who's handling uh, the platform. I'm James Stanger. I'm President and Chief Certification Architect. And, and Steven Schneider is our Certification Specialist and is an author and educator and is a, a fantastic technologist. So we're co-presenting today. But our featured guest, and I've got a big headshot of, of you there, uh, Tom, is Tom Miller. So there you go. Uh, I, I figured, why not make you look really big? This is your moment, right. dude. Thanks, so uh, you are the general manager of Your Tango. You live in New York City, and you do, among many other things, create videos. You direct the shoot. You, uh, you help edit the material. You're also a blogger. I looked you up online, a yeah. social media expert. Tom, tell us a bit about yourself and what, uh, what Your Tango is and what you do uh, there, because this is fascinating stuff. Yeah, I'll start with the, the home brand. Uh, yeah, YourTango.com is a right. women's interest uh, website focused on love and relationships. We, we cover um, kind of everything from uh, you know uh, flirting all the way through uh, divorce and, and starting over. Um, a lot of our, as you can imagine, a lot of our most searched material is uh, a little spicier, um, kind of having to do with uh, you know uh, sex and keeping your relationship hot and heavy. We produce uh, blog content, uh, uh, essays, uh, you know, long. Uh, Research pieces, and you know, long for the web means uh, research for mm -hmm. uh, three weeks, and, and turned turned into a two thousand word essay instead of a uh, you know eleven thousand word essay for uh, the middle section of Vanity Fair. Uh, we were originally a print magazine uh, started by Andrea Miller in two thousand six. Um, since then, we I'm sorry, two thousand five. Since then. Um, uh, after being a quarterly magazine for uh, roughly three and a half years, we switched to full time uh, full time online, and kind of with, with that came the um, trappings of being able to react more quickly uh, to, to news, uh, create kind of uh, bloggier uh, posts that weren't necessarily as uh, in intensive in copy editing, and, and just generally be able to uh, kind of move with the speed of life. And, and part of that was also that you know now we don't have this. Uh, huge um, uh, bundle of paper weighing us down every time we, we decide to publish, uh, you know, we decided to create video. Um, 
from there, we hired a, a team of, of producers and editors who um, uh, kind of helped us roll out our initial videos. And uh, One of the ways we bifurcate our audience is by what we call love stage. So we organize it through single, taken, engaged, married, and starting over. And then there's also kind of a, uh, a nod to Facebook, and that there's also complicated because you know, there's there's a time in a lot of people's lives when you're uh, when you could be both uh, starting over and still married. Um, you know, so we figured that's complicated. So from there, we created a series of videos, really just as promo pieces that were you know you know you're starting over when you know you're, you're no longer throwing darts at your ex. You know you're married when uh, you have a half hour long argument over how to properly load the dishwasher, and so. Uh, we kind of created these as marketing pieces, and they they did pretty well for us on YouTube. So uh, we decided to hire this video team. Um, uh, it ended up just being two guys when I say video team uh, full time and producing video from there. Uh, initially, we produced a a lot of uh, scripted video, i.e., you know, different camera setups. It, it tells a narrative, but our real sweet spot is interviewing experts. Um, uh, part of our uh, part of our revenue model is um, having creating uh, microsites within our website for uh, experts in the love and relationships field. You know, be it uh, a dating coach, matchmaker, couples counselor, psychotherapist. You know, they they all need to hang out a shingle because you know you got to got to keep the clients uh, rolling in. Right. So so um, uh, one of our uh, uh, most of the video we do now, in fact, is interviewing these experts. Um, short uh, web style interviews, 90 seconds to three minutes. The topics cover everything from, uh, you know, uh, my hu husband's no longer interested in sex to, um, you know, my my kids only listen to their teacher, they'll never listen to me. So kind of, uh, you know, very much in the, uh, very focused in the love and relationships field, but also uh, we still um, a little bit into uh, parenting and health. We start our audience, you know, mostly of, Women uh, mid twenties to uh, late fifties kind of uh, are very interested in parenting and health content as well. So that's kind of uh, your, your tango and our um, the nascency of our video product in a nutshell. Thanks, man, and everybody. You can go uh, later on after this webcast to yourtango.com, and you can see uh, uh, some of Tom's work, what he does. Uh, once uh, the way that Tom and I met is that we needed to do some uh, interviews with experts. And so uh, uh, Barry Fingerhut, our CEO, uh, he basically called you, had me call you up, and you uh, shot us in yep. Manhattan. So uh, I can now say I've been shot in Manhattan. <laughs> so uh, your team, your your team did a fantastic job in helping us interview folks, and you put together uh, all of those videos that we're now going over. And so it was only yep. natural that we would say, well, if we want an expert in the field who is used to working in the web, who understands what it means to put together compelling uh, video, it's Tom. So let's talk about some tips, tricks, and traps. Now, what we're doing, Tom, is in these uh, slides, I'm putting together some kind of thoughts here. And to me, it, it's all about, you know, whether it be a graphic or a video, about telling a story or presenting an argument, creating a moment. Tell, tell me, when it comes to putting together that, Good, uh, as you put it, what ninety second, maybe two, two or three minute video. What what do you have in mind, and how do you go about making sure that you put together something that's compelling? I, I guess a, the huge part of it is um, making sure you're on the same page if it's interview with the, the subject. Um, you know, they're they're a subject matter expert in their field, but doesn't necessarily mean they're a subject matter expert at looking at a camera and uh, mm -hmm. delivering an answer to a uh, either a question from our audience or a question that they're asked uh, very regularly in their practice in a, a concise way. So uh, a big part of it is uh, getting bullet pointed. Uh, you know what what they want the answer to be. You, know, you start with the introduction. Hi, I'm uh, uh, you know Tammy Nelson, uh, Dr. Tammy Nelson, ex expert on uh, uh, divorce and remarriage. And then you kind mm -hmm. of uh, work into. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if you, uh, if you guys recall. Uh, in elementary school or middle school, when you're you know answering uh, something in like a short paragraph form, they always wanted you to uh, start the answer with a restatement of the question. And so it's like a lot of times you want to uh, restate the, restate the questions. Uh, so you're kind of um, 
not repeating yourself, but uh, so there's a very natural segue into your bullet pointed answer. Uh, you know, and then you you try to wrap up as, as best you can with uh, either a, a very concise summary of what you just said, or a you know a, something to the effect of you know the purpose of these videos uh, for our interviews are for people to eventually to uh, use these people's services. So a lot of times the the wrap up is uh, you know for more on uh, for more on overcoming your uh, debilitating shyness, uh, please contact me, or you know, some kind of um, okay. uh, very explicit call out that um, makes it uh, really difficult not, not to know that, that this person can help you, for instance. Thanks, Tom. I, you know, I, I think when it comes to, you know, creating uh, this video, you talk about the, you know, bringing in an, uh, an expert in this. So how do you focus on, you know, when it comes to any graphical content, whether it be an image or a video? Uh, how do you get them focused on the objectives in the story or the point that you want to make? I mean, how do you get them pointed towards the particular audience that you, at, let's say, at your tango have and, and your business goals? I mean, is it, I, to me, it's, it's about being brief, authoritative, and relevant. So how do you go about doing that? Uh, yeah, the, absolutely. Uh, uh, brief, authoritative, and relevant. I'm just looking at the, the bullet points are the um, uh, total mandates. Uh, uh, the biggest part of it is... Um, <laughs> Uh, that they have to know, um, the, that the expert has to know exa exactly what they want to say, um, and then we help them craft it into something like uh, very pithy and, and easy. The um, really tricky point, unfortunately, is that most people, uh, even with a good TV experience, aren't trained actors, so they, they have a hard time memorizing exactly what they want to say, so making it as, um, as bite-sized as possible for them is kind of the uh, trick to making a, a single interview work. You know, periodically, if, um, if someone's up for it, we'll uh, uh, run a, um, a teleprompter. We, we've got um, a, a laptop-based one, but it's actually the, uh, about the best, cheapest one out there is uh, for the iPad. I think it's called uh, Prompter Pro. And, and uh, a really important thing is for the expert to be relaxed. Otherwise, it's very hard for them to kind of uh, stay on on goal, so you know, periodically someone will uh, take down a glass of wine before they start, just to um, uh, kind of uh, lower their heart rate. You know, a lot of times we'll shoot, um, sure. we'll shoot for a half hour, almost practicing before we actually get into the real stuff. And then uh, sometimes they'll just start start the camera rolling and have someone talk about themselves until until we think that they're um, uh, kind of properly uh, uh, um, uh, uh, deadrenalized. Uh, I think I'm making up a word there, but. Um, uh, so they're kind of uh, a little more on, on point and uh, uh, less jittery. For a second, I thought you were going to say adrenalized, you know, like that old Def Leppard album or something. But I think you're right. You got to put you yeah. got to put people at ease, <laughs> don't you? You know, yeah. I, I think that's the main thing. Uh, uh, Stephen is a natural person at at being at ease. Uh, Stephen and I got shot in Salt Lake City uh, here a while back doing a bunch of videos. And um, and that, it was fun, but uh, Stephen was very good at, at getting getting to ease. I think they had to hide the diet coke on me. Uh, I was out of time, so, uh. Well, but 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 I I, I do. I'm, I'm relating with what Tom was saying there because, yeah. you know, if you if you think about, it, there was James and I out there. We were we were on camera. We were talking about CIW products, but and and in, you know in realistic forms, it wasn't that much video. But it took us so long to 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 do it and a lot of it was getting James and I into the into the mode of talking on camera. It was really helpful and I think your point about uh, getting people to talk about discrete ideas is there and and uh, is, is a really good point Tom and, and here is some research I did around this. You mentioned this uh, in a conversation we had here a couple of weeks ago about attention span. Uh, not only about putting people at ease but also using proper snippets and some of the things I found were like between 90 seconds to two and a half minutes uh, of video, Social Times came up with it saying the, for somebody, the maximum time is maybe five minutes that people have attention spans. But then people came up with this. While watching a video, uh, the average person has between eight, maybe 12 seconds of attention span per idea. Does that make any sense to you, Tom? Yeah, I, I can see that. Uh, yeah, um, uh, okay. yeah that, totally, that totally makes sense. Right? We, um, uh, uh, while um, you know tautology might work in rhetoric, uh, 
it, it repeating yourself over and over again uh, in, in video makes for a very boring video. Boring, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. And I think that one of the ways that you keep from boring people is do, do you put together some sort of script or storyboard for these things? Or do you usually let it go free flow? What, what has worked for you as you're shooting videos? I've, uh, what my suggestion to the folks in the audience might be that a, a storyboard or a script really might help people, and then you can depart from it. But you're the expert here. Yeah, no, th that's absolutely correct. Um, with uh, you know a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews, um, we uh, the storyboard is, is really simple. It's more uh, more or less uh, bullet points, and then if um, as we're going through there, if they have something um, uh, particularly soundbitey to say, we'll, we'll make sure to get that as, a, uh, as an exact quote um, and just kind of a, a work through free form from there. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, storyboarding is uh, substantially more important when you're shooting something scripted. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, 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 if you're shooting um, a viral video or um, kind of more of a, a, a how-to that requires you know the, the, the uh, uh, words to be exactly exactly correct and um, there's a, um, a thing called a, uh, a paper cut you do also as, as part of a storyboard in which you um, uh, a, 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 uh, include uh, dialogue and uh, either thumbnail sketches or actually photographs of, of kind of how you want things to look. So just um, as you're going through your shooting list, you, you make sure to get everything uh, exactly as you want it and uh, kind of in the, in the same uh, time that you want it. Very good. So the idea is that you can you can substitute uh, instead of having just somebody talking, you can substitute other concepts and ideas. Let's talk about some considerations to get authoritative shots, to get really interesting things. Uh, I, I'm thinking of specific strategies here, and I thought about throwing I, I threw some things up here. You know, you can you can zoom in on somebody's face to, uh, to get authoritative shots or multiple camera angles. What are yep. some of the things that work for you? Uh, there's a, a, um, a crest shot is kind of for, for interviews. Um, Can you say that again? What shot? A what shot? A, a, say that again. A cre I'm sorry, a crest uh, shot, in which is um, essentially from the uh, rib cage up, um, is about the most popular shot for interviews. It, it can kind of um, uh, uh, let people sit and kind of fidget with their legs a little bit, and if they want to have notes on their lap, um, they, they can, and they can kind of do the old... Um, you know the old uh, rumor about newscasters are uh, in their boxer shorts uh, behind right, them. Yeah. <laughs> just you know, you know, you know, once more, just kind of um, being able to put yourself at ease. And uh, you know, some people get self-conscious about uh, how their their legs or, or tummy might look. So it, it's just kind of uh, very much to uh, uh, you know keep people focused on the job at hand. And, and you know, and it also gives you the opportunity to raise your hand. Some people, as long as you keep it. Uh, Keep them not in front of your face. A lot of people uh, really like to make points with their hands. So uh, a crush shot gives you the opportunity to um, uh, kind of put your hands at, at chest level and, and talk with them. Uh, uh, um, uh, particularly for interviewing, um, having as much exposure to someone's face and have them looking. Uh, there's kind of two styles of it. There's uh, looking directly into the camera lens, which some people find kind of unsettling to, to do, it, um, kind of making eye contact with the, with the lens. Uh, and then there's kind of another style in which you look um, you know, between a foot and uh, 18 inches, kind of off to the side of the camera, uh, as if you're you're kind of talking to someone there. But the good news is that um, it doesn't seem like either either style makes much of a difference to the to the viewing audience. Um, it, it makes a big difference to the viewing audience if you, your eyes are kind of uh, darting uh, here and there. You look, uh, you know, you look a little shifty. Um, then uh, the great news about multiple camera angles: a lot of times we'll shoot two, three, or, or four cameras. Uh, just so that if if the uh, person's having a really difficult time uh, completing uh, you know kind of a, a set train of thought, we can kind of piece mm -hmm. it together a little bit with a, a best of, and you know you switch angles so that it's um, so that it's seamless and doesn't seem like you're you're doing a, an intentional cutaway because uh, because the person can't uh, can't really get it. It's it's funny. There was a, um, uh, a Simpson spoof of. Uh, 60 minutes, probably about 10 years ago, in which um, Homer is uh, yeah. uh, accused of some crime, and they um, they uh, they splice it together with the um, a lot of different zooms and, and cuts to make it seem like he's admitting to it. But in the background, there's a clock, and the, the clock uh, the arms of the clock keep jump, jumping as they do the uh, as they do the different cuts. So you know, it's kind of a um, kind of a winking nod to uh, you know a lot, a lot of um, interviews 
uh, for the sake of both brevity and kind of telling a story, are, are edited together uh, in, in kind of a way to, to make sure that everyone kind of stays on the same message. That makes perfect sense. Have you done much training video? Have you have you created videos that that have to do with training? Now, there's a question in the from the audience talking about attention spans, and you know we want to be brief, and yet you also want to you know get a, an important concept across. There's this fine line. Do you have any yeah, advice about that? Yeah, we've done a little bit of uh, uh, training videos. I, I think the the absolute uh, best way to uh, prepare them is to uh, kind of turn them into um, micro lessons. Um, you know, I, I stay stay relatively short. You know, uh, sub five minutes, uh, and then that way, if someone needed to watch all all these videos in a row, they could. Otherwise, they could just uh, consume them kind of uh, one at a time to get uh, to basically just get the uh, uh, nuts and bolts of a of a single central point. I, I also recommend having uh, for training videos uh, having um, uh, some. They uh, they used to call it a Chiron because the Chiron Corporation produced them, but a, a lower third is a uh, you know the set of words that go across the bottom of the screen. You know, on, on Fox News mm -hmm. it's a crawl, or on CNN it's it's a crawl with uh, you know either you know, stock stock ticker or um, breaking news. Sometimes uh, uh, sometimes misspelled, but um, uh, the uh, having uh, key info on the lower third and periodically going to we'll call it a title card. Uh, you know, you'll you'll flash away from uh, the person uh, on screen just to have. Uh, on-screen writing, just so that if, uh, if there are bullet points that are absolutely critical and someone needs to jot them down, they don't have to do it uh, just exclusively based on someone's voice. Yeah, and that that brings up a really good point, Tom. That 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 I was wanting to make too, especially as far as some of those goes. You know, how much, how important is it to to break up from just what I refer to as a talking head, where you know you're you're doing an interview or or an instructor is is, is giving key points. To you know, including animation or including demonstration or or like you were saying, uh, you know, falling out to to you know the bullet point text on the screen so that they're not just relying on on, on verbal text. Uh, yeah. Is, yeah. is there is there a right ratio to that 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 you have seen or? Um, I don't I don't know that anyone could uh, put gospel to a ratio. You know, unless you're uh, someone like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, uh, eventually, uh, people are going to get a. Uh, Kind of sick of uh, of your head and voice. So having right. ideas for um, uh, for uh, graphic treatment um, is, is a great idea. Um, uh, infographics uh, uh, perform, you know, by themselves they perform incredibly well uh, on the web. Uh, they seem relatively popular on uh, in in video too. Uh, you know, especially if you can add a, a touch of animation to them, uh, just to keep someone's eyes moving a little bit. Um, but unfortunately, I don't know that there is uh, necessarily uh, necessarily a ratio, uh, uh, you know, between the, the live action and uh, and graphic considerations. But you know, the kind of the more um, visually interesting you can make something, uh, the better. Right, right. That's a good point. Thanks, Tom. Hey, uh, you mentioned something about an iPad app. Was that Foster Pro? I didn't quite. Uh, oh, uh, hear that. yeah. Um, uh, it is. Um, uh, Prompter Pro. Um, Prompter Pro. It, Sorry about that. Yeah, man. no, there's no problem. And if you, and if, I'm sure if you uh, search the App Store, there, there had probably has to be um, uh, like 50 uh, teleprompter apps, and you know, I, I feel like it's probably just uh, uh, a matter of, of which one you like best. And so the, um, the really important thing with uh, using a teleprompter is uh, the one we have, um, you know, that that's uh, laptop based. It actually is an attachment to the end of the camera. Um, so you're looking straight through the uh, camera lens, and just in front of the camera, you're uh, you're seeing the the teleprompter words. You know, basically, this is kind of um, how the pros do it. But uh, obviously, you can't you can't look through an iPad. Um, you know, maybe iPad five will will have a clear version. But um, uh, so you'll want to get it as absolutely close to eye level as possible. So uh, you might use a stand. Um, or, or something just to hold it just below the camera lens, and as long as you don't move your eyes from the camera to the eye, uh, to the prompter uh, and back and forth, uh, it's really difficult. Uh, if, you know, if your eyes are only eight inches or so, um, uh, focus eight inches or so from the lens, it's really difficult to tell that you're you're not looking um, uh, directly into camera. 
That's a good point, too, about the shifty eyes aspect. I mean, uh, you want your experts to look good. You don't want them to look like, you know, Richard Nixon, you know, uh, yeah. trying to avoid <laughs> yeah, something. You know, sorry for the dated reference, everybody. But yeah. Well, let's talk about some specific techniques of, uh, of, uh, and, and, and the equipment. You mentioned uh, yeah. things, things such as, the telep you know, nice teleprompter ways of doing things. And let's talk about creating that environment, cameras. Let's talk about cameras for a second and a little bit about lighting, uh, lenses too. Yeah, um, uh, it totally depends on what you want to shoot. Um, uh, uh, there's, um, there are uh, pros out there who shoot feature-length movies on, um, on the kind of, uh, you know, we're not talking Hollywood films, but we're still talking, uh, you know, 90-minute movies on uh, the kind of camera that uh, you and I might buy for uh, eight, 800 bucks. <laughs> At, uh, at Best Buy, like a like a Canon T2i, or um, really popular is the Canon 7D. Uh, these cameras were created with a, a video function, just because uh, you know uh, when they started rolling them out, uh, like eight years ago or six years ago, uh, kind of everyone was interested in being able to shoot short snippets of video. What they didn't realize is that people were going to uh, use them for uh, these kind of unintended uh, uh, unintended projects. Uh, so the, the really tricky thing is that uh, you can only shoot generally, uh, depending on the, the make of uh, these uh, early, uh, or early these kind of um, uh, mid-era uh, DSLR cameras, is that uh, you can generally only shoot somewhere between 12 and 15 minutes of uninterrupted video and you've got to uh, reset. If you're shooting a, uh, if you're shooting a, a film, uh, that's really, really not that big a deal. You know, uh, chances are uh, a scene only lasts uh, are seen from a, a particular angle only last uh, 50 seconds. It's a little more difficult if you're shooting a, uh, a live event or if you're shooting um, uh, interviews. But you know, then again, chances are you, you can um, uh, you can kind of work around that in an interview. That you know, make each, each interviewed segment uh, exactly uh, 10 minutes, and then do uh, what we call a pickup. You know, essentially if um, uh, if someone floods the line or uh, goes off the rails or uh, you know bird flies into the window, you'll do a pickup. Basically, say everyone, I right, remember kind of exactly where you just were, and we'll we'll pick it up from there. We'll just uh, we'll cut to uh, a different camera angle, just just, just so it doesn't look like um, uh, the the camera cut out or or something to that effect. Uh, at this point, if you're shooting something longer. Um, uh, Panasonic makes a really great camera uh, that. Uh, I, I don't really like using the term prosumer because everything has become uh, everything you can make look yeah. very professional now. But they have a an amazing prosumer camera called the AF100. I think it retails for like forty five hundred dollars. Um, chances are you can find a used one on eBay for less than that. And then uh, uh, at our office, we're getting a, uh, a camera called a, a C100, which is um, uh, Canon's version uh, of the uh, of the Panasonic camera. It's a little more expensive, but um, it can use the same lenses that a, a Canon still camera or you know a DSLR camera uh, could use. So it, it kind of makes uh, makes it easier to uh, cross over gear. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, the uh, the current models of, of great uh, you know consumer slash prosumer cameras that you can get you can get you know for around a thousand bucks, maybe maybe as low as uh, five hundred or, or even uh, find something on eBay for cheaper. But the um, Real value proposition is in the lenses. Um, uh, lenses also can run the gamut in, in prices, but having a, a couple decent lenses, particularly like a uh, like a 35 to 24 um, lens, uh, really is what is what makes the um, the shoot look great and, and look professional. You know, you can spend thousands of dollars for um, for lenses. You know, giving giving you uh, various lengths. Um, uh, uh, various lengths, various depth, depth of field, um, just kind of that as your as your heart desires. But you know, the 35, 24. If you're if you're just shooting uh, a series of interviews or a series of roundtables without without people moving too much, is probably uh, a pretty good place to start. Okay, so you've talked about uh, you know about the importance of you know good looking video. You also mentioned in a previous conversation the importance of having good sound, and you were saying yeah. that it's difficult to fix. Sound issues after the shoot. T tell us more about that. Yeah, uh, sound is is the thing that um, uh, you know. Unless you have a actually, even if you do have a 
uh, a full Hollywood studio, sound isn't really something that, uh, particularly dialogue sound, isn't really something that we've uh, figured out that great a job of fixing yet. You know, in a um, uh, in a big budget movie, if uh, uh, even you know even a small budget movie, if for some reason someone's uh, dialogue or lines don't come across that well, they'll they'll actually bring the person into into a studio to re-record those lines um, so they can uh, uh, sync them. Uh, sync them with their mouth. It's called um, ADR, which stands for Automated Dialogue uh, Replacement. And so it's absolutely key when you're when you're initially shooting something that you don't have that either time or capacity uh, to get the, the best sound. Uh, it, the, you kind of a lot of times want to go with the backup. But the, the most popular way to shoot uh, something interview style is uh, using um, a lav mic. It's you know it's the thing that you'll see on someone's um, uh, lapel generally uh, on the news. They'll have a, a, a cable running from uh, a small mic. Uh, generally, uh, you know, generally try to get it within six inches or so of their mouth, and if possible, um, kind of uh, as dead center as possible on their chest. And for the most part, everyone just kind of uh, puts it over on the edge of their lapel, and they'll have a, a transmitter pack, uh, generally kind of uh, in the back of their waistband, and that's uh, uh, transmitting to a uh, receiver that's uh, bringing in the audio, and it, as um, okay. as best as you can, you'll have someone whose job is exclusively to monitor the audio. Uh, sometimes someone will touch their chest, and it'll it'll create a, a really loud thump. Um, you know, and you know, there's a um, if you're shooting uh, multiple multiple uh, subjects, uh, sometimes um, uh, their audio levels will, um, as one's talking, uh, will pick up a little too much on the other guy's mic. So it's really nice. Uh, to have the uh, luxury of having someone whose job is exclusively to audit audio, auditor, I'm sorry, monitor audio, and it's also a great idea uh, just in case to have a, a boom mic. So you'll uh, have a shotgun mic set up generally over the over the people you're shooting, uh, just in case for some crazy reason the sound isn't that great coming through uh, their individuals. So that way you have to oh, have yeah. a backup as far as sound editing. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Stephen. Uh, Stephen, did you have a point? No, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, sorry, man. I, uh, no, I did not. I, I, I think that's no. I think that's really interesting as far as having a backup sound. I had not even even thought of that. Having yeah, a backup mic it. that records it just in case. That's that's a cool point. Uh, and then uh, I think was a, a slide or two ago. Uh, uh, lighting is is really uh, uh, really important. You know, and it's um, and, you know, I've uh, yeah. never worked on a I've never worked on a, a big budget set, but I've you know been on them a handful of times and. Most of the guys on the on the set um, are are there for the purpose of uh, lighting and electrical. You know, the, um, while the uh, director of photography on a big budget movie's job is to make sure everything looks good, there, there's actually a guy called a gaffer whose um, whose job is to um, uh, adjust the lighting as uh, as need be. Um, uh, you know, the kind of the, the ga uh, you know from there. Uh, you know, if you're watching the uh, title, I'm sorry, the end sequence uh, credits of, of a movie, you'll see. Names like uh, Grip, uh, Key Grip, Best Boy, uh, all those guys are working on uh, electrical and light. So you know, the Key Grip is the chief aide to the gaffer. Best Boy is generally the, the chief assistant to the Key Grip. And um, uh, you know, if you're if you're in New York City or LA, walking on the street and you see uh, four semis uh, filled with gear, that that's all the, all the lighting and all the uh, grip equipment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's amazing stuff. Let me ask you about. Oh, yeah, there was an audience question about uh, going back to sound just for a second. Do okay, wire, uh, wireless microphones? How well do they work? Uh, is that what you use, or do you prefer wired? Or it just depends on how much you spend. Uh, we use. Uh, we generally use wireless mics. Um, the um, if, okay. if you're in a uh, generally small uh, studio style space, uh, the the signal is strong enough uh, that that you really don't have much worry. I mean, you you can go with. Um, uh, wired mics. It's uh, I guess it's just maybe um, uh, there actually is really no reason not to if, if the person's sitting still. Sometimes uh, I, I found that people forget that they're wired up. You know, uh, when when they get up to uh, grab a sip of water or um, or hit the bathroom, uh, uh, so, uh, someone ends up uh, uh, dragging a um, uh, a cord with them. We forget, uh, someone forgets to pull it off. Cool. Thanks, Tom. We've talked a bit about uh, already using the right equipment, a good lens that can be very expensive. You already mentioned tripod. How about monitors? Uh, yeah. What, what, what kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's really nice to have, uh, it's really nice to have a monitor. Um, 
uh, you can convert, um, uh, depending on the, your camera, you can convert a lot of different um, uh, uh, viewing devices uh, to monitors. Um, the, the tricky thing is that when you're uh, looking in the viewfinder of your camera, even a really great camera, it doesn't look exactly like it, it's the end product is going to look. So having a, a monitor that's both um, a little bigger than the, the two inch by one inch uh, viewfinder is is really nice, a uh, really nice luxury to get kind of a, a greater sense of uh, of how things are going to look in, in a little more detail and, and also um, kind of more of a, a true expectations of what uh, colors will look like. So I, you know, uh, you can find a monitor. Uh, pretty cheaply, you know, uh, you can probably find something great for 100 to 150 bucks um, that'll run depending on uh, which camera you're using. It'll it'll run at, at like a um, probably a mini DVI. Uh, newer cameras are all HDMI um, uh, outports, so it uh, it'll depend. And I, I guess uh, a little bit of the uh, trouble with some of this uh, kind of luxury stuff is if you're shooting something with a uh, really small crew, uh, eventually all the gear becomes cumbersome. Interesting. Okay, so that's a, that's a great tip as well. Uh, we already talked a bit about equipment costs, so I'm not going to go into that. Yeah. Let's talk about a tactics overview real quick, Tom. So high-quality camera, proper lighting, yeah. make sure you have control over sound. Good points about monitors. By the way, there was uh, a question from the audience asking, hey, what about Android-based apps? I know a lot of folks in the video world are very Mac-oriented. You're more of a Mac-oriented person, aren't you, yeah. Tom, or am I remembering that wrong? Okay. No, no, uh, that's, that's exactly did, right. And, and I noticed, uh, I just a uh, quick Google and uh, noticed uh, that there were some things such as, and I'm trying to remember what they were. Yeah, there we go. Easy prompter, uh, Android yeah. prompter, and even free teleprompter for Android. So I'm more of yeah. an Android guy, but then again, okay. I, I, I shoot really lame videos. But, uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like, um, uh, you know, I feel like maybe up until uh, two years ago, the, or a year and a half ago, the um, Mac-based uh, mobile devices, uh, we're head and shoulders better than everyone else. But I feel like it's uh, if uh, it's not neck and neck, really close to it now. That um, uh, unfortunately, there is probably a smaller uh, variety of apps on um, on the non -IO, um, iOS machines. But you know, it, it, I'm sure whatever whatever you can find, it, it, it probably uh, if not yet, at some point will be uh, pretty fungible. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. Let's talk for a second about formats and storage. Uh, I noticed as you were shooting video that uh, QuickTime seemed to be something that uh, you used, uh, and there are additional formats, of course. Uh, tell us a bit about this. Uh, yeah, the um, I guess this is a little bit back to a um, uh, Mac versus PC question. I um, most people, particularly in the um, uh, most people, do uh, edit using um, Mac-based gear. The um, Probably the most popular uh, software is Final Cut. Um, uh, so you'll you'll move these files uh, from Final Cut um, uh, in a the actually the initial uh, format will come across is the H.264, and so you'll move them. Uh, you'll import them uh, depending on if you're shooting if you're shooting your tape. You'll have to digitize the tape, which basically is a, a one to one ratio. I.e., for one minute of tape, it takes one minute to digitize it. Um, and if you're shooting to uh, SD cards uh, or CF cards, uh, it's probably uh, uploading the footage is probably uh, six to one, seven to one, uh, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, uh, getting it up. Uh, depending on the uh, exact format you're shooting, um, video is very data intensive. It's uh, probably between uh, 12 gig and uh, 20 gig uh, per hour of video. You know, if you're obviously if you're uh, editing on your laptop, that uh, you know that fills things up pretty quickly. So uh, for for the most part, uh, any decent editor's uh, office is a uh, absolutely filled uh, filled to the brim with uh, external hard drives. Okay, so a lot of external hard drives. When it comes to memory cards, you're looking for class 10 or above, uh, yeah. or is that not a, okay? And that is an issue, right? If you have a, a card that is not particularly fast, you're going to spend forever doing things. Yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly right. And uh, uh, there's probably not a whole lot of evidence for this, but um, it, it seems like the earlier versions of cards are uh, less reliable. I don't know if it's because they have more miles on them, or um, uh, or they just um, aren't aren't prepared for the uh, amount of uh, data. You know, when it comes, thank you very very much, Tom. You know, when it comes to actually creating the videos, how often are your customers surprised? Like, 
well, why does it take so long to shoot it? Or, wow, it takes that long to edit it? I think most people, they kind of are in instant gratification mode when it comes to video. Well, gosh, it's in the camera. You're not done yet? Uh, <laughs> tell us about your perspective on that. This, this is what I've noticed. Yeah, it, it, that's exactly right. It, um, uh, one uh, one big part of it is that uh, it is so data intensive. So uh, you know, even if you do have um, mm -hmm. uh, a, a nice workstation with uh, a lot of horsepower, it's still uh, between um, rendering and uh, exporting uh, HD video. Uh, it just takes a, a really long time. And then from there, it takes uh, a decent amount of time to uh, upload it to Vimeo or or, or YouTube or um, or even like an online sharing site, we use a media fire uh, for sharing uh, full downloadable files, and so it, you know it takes a little bit of time to uh, upload uh, video to that. And um, also the editing process, uh, you know, outside of the the rendering is just uh, it is kind of painstaking uh, because it is uh, you know you want to make sure to get it right. Uh, you know, if not right the first time, right the second time uh, because everything does uh, take so long to. Right. You know, whereas you might um, be able to gloss over a, a written article or, or even a, a graphic made in Photoshop because you can really easily go back in and change it, um, a video you just kind of want to uh, take your sweet time and, and make sure everything looks and sounds right. Hey Tom, can I back up? Can I get you to back up for just a second yes, um, about about the formats yep. um, ag again? Um, when you're when you're putting content out for the web, knowing that everybody's kind of using different different browsers and, and that, that support different things. Yep. It, and, I, and I know you were talking about the, the Mac format and whatnot, but is, is there a particular type of format that is is, is best suited if, if you don't know what your audience is going to be using, but, you, but you're putting it out on the web? What, what's your main type of format that you all are striving for? Um, in, in my experience, it's been QuickTime. Um, uh, and it, I, it could be a Mac bias over here, but the, the QuickTime player for uh, for PC works incredibly well. Um, mm -hmm. And, and um, the good news is the QuickTime player for, for Mac will also play uh, MP4 with no problem. Um, but uh, for, for the most part, I feel like uh, uh, the .mov files are um, kind of the way to go. If, if presumably, uh, you're not going to create your own video player, and you're not going to be sharing these. Videos just by uh, sending someone a URL to download them. You know, chances are you're going to upload them to, um, you know, to Hulu, to Vimeo, to uh, you know, AOL, Five Men, uh, to YouTube, to uh, uh, some video sharing site, and they they all seem to uh, get along pretty well with uh, QuickTime files. Okay. Okay. Cool. No, great point. Great, uh, great discussion. I I wanted to get a little bit into video editing, a little bit more into that. But, uh, so when it comes to editing, uh, you know, the time that it takes, you have to choose the content right. You have to take that raw information and segment according to attention spans, like we already talked about, focusing on the right message. You choose angles and perspectives. You insert appropriate alternative images. I think that might be called a B-roll. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but you, you focus on a useful, um, you know, concepts and things. What additional topics do you have in mind here when it comes to the editing process? What am, what am I missing here? Uh, a big part of it's knowing your your audience. If um, uh, you know something okay. is intended for um, uh, fifteen year olds, uh, you're probably going to make the segments uh, incredibly short and probably uh, do something kind of interesting between segments. But if you know if um, uh, if you look at like a uh, an episode of sixty minutes, that you you'll notice they always have the the long shot of someone walking down a hallway. Uh, as a as a B roll between segments, you know, it's like a yeah. 16 year old will have no time for that, but a um, you know a, a 45 year old who is very interested, uh, you know, in a, uh, the Enron scandal probably um, wouldn't mind the palate mm -hmm. cleanser uh, between segments. So a huge part of it is um, understanding uh, exactly who you want to watch this and you know what they'll think of it. Uh, it's like you'll watch a, um, uh, for instance, uh, the uh, digital shorts. On, on Saturday Night Live, the, you know, the I'm on a boat uh, videos, you, you'll yeah. notice that the, the entire thing is as, um, as packed with uh, audio in, in video, um, uh, I guess, beats as possible. Like everything, almost everything is a joke just because they, um, uh, they, don't, want you to, uh, uh, they don't want you to switch away from it. They, you know, they want everything to be as um, uh, visually and uh, audibly 
stimulating as possible because they know their audience uh, has got no time in their hands for um, uh, for being bored even for a second. Sure. And so as part of that, you could use that as a an establishing shot. You know, somebody somebody walking into the room or walking yeah. into the building or or the. Uh, I remember the old David Letterman would start, you know, on the streets of New York and then kind of go into a window and there's, you know, the audience kind yeah. of thing. You can do all those things to capture interest, but also set a stage. You know, how do you go about amplifying a particular concept? Like for your tango, if there's some real point you want to hit hard, I, I'm throwing out some ideas here about maybe focus on the person's face or key movement, humor. What, what are some things that work for you? Yeah, uh, a big thing is that you uh, absolutely have to hit a point really hard, um, uh, demonstrating uh, or um, either demonstrating or having something a little more uh, visual is a, a great way of doing it. There's a um, an expert we have who uh, um, I think her name is Patty Contenta, who her whole thing is just kind of uh, using uh, using your body language to be very flirty. So uh, rather than our normal uh, talking headshot, a lot of ours. Uh, uh, would be uh, of her, you know, doing a, a very uh, uh, particular walk, and then we just capture her audio as a voiceover, um, j just so that you know, just so that great uh, idea. Rather, rather than um, you know, rather than tell me, it's it show me. So I like that a real creativity in using sound and video together. Yeah, rather than the straight, you know, diegetic or the sound, you know, sound that comes out of the action of the. Of the audience, you're actually, you know, imposing sound from a different moment over, you know, body movement to amplify a point. Yeah, yeah. Great, and, great and way to obviously, go. yeah, and obviously the, the note on um, uh, humor and uh, kind of being really sound bitey is um, is really good too. Uh, and I feel like we wouldn't, um, uh, I feel like we, we uh, Dr. Phil wouldn't be on on TV every day if he wasn't, uh, <laughs> a, you know, very very sound sound bitey and, uh, you know, kind of uh, able to. Um, uh, you know, turn a, a really great uh, southern phrase. So uh, he does indeed. Sound bites are really bites are really important that way. We already talked about video editing software, Avid, yeah. Apple Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere. Can you uh, you know shoot from a phone or tablet or how about editing from a mobile device because people are consuming things more in mobile devices or is that just crazy talk? What what do you think? No, no. I, I mean I. Uh, it's really difficult to shoot something um, ultra pro uh, and, and edit it from a, a mobile device, but um, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Vine. It's um, uh, it's a, a video uh, a social Vine. video. Yeah, V I N E. Uh, it's a, oh yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, social video sharing site, and uh, there are some hilarious videos that uh, people kind of shoot selfies of on um, on just their iPhone or, or, or Android or tablet. Um, you know, and instantly, without you know, without uh, doing anything but uh, cutting the ends off, uh, it, you know, basically instantly post to Vine, and I, they seem to uh, uh, they seem to do a, a great job of um, of uh, getting views. And so I, I feel like in a lot of in a lot of cases, um, if you're not going for an uh, ultra uh, polished professional look, just content is key, and however you can get that content created. Now you're talking about kind of the, in a sense, the viral video world, yeah. right? Or, That's or right. very, I, I can't, I can't use the word quick time, but I suppose it's the, uh, as you go video or, or just in time kind of video yeah. world. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, it's kind, of, yeah, it's kind of CNN's, uh, um, kind of has the, the citizens reporting kind of, uh, uh yeah. online style. Yeah. Uh, great, great example. Well, when it comes to hosting your video, I think a lot of people are like, well, that's why God gave us YouTube. And, and, and that's yeah. fine, I suppose, but when it comes to hosting, uh, and if you use uh, some sort of free thing, it, it can rob you of bandwidth, or it can rob you of metrics and analytics, uh, yeah. or even the ability to control costs. Uh, I think you mentioned, uh, was it MediaGraph and OneScreen as uh, companies yeah. that you can use? Why would you use those rather than YouTube, or, or what have uh, you? YouTube is great, and um, there's a, a very good chance, you know, they'll help you get a lot of views, and it's... Um, it used to be really difficult to become a YouTube partner, um, and basically what partner means is that mm -hmm. you uh, share in the profits of the pre-roll, um, pre-roll video and the companion video, or a companion, um, uh, companion advertising they run on your video. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, but basically, I, I think at this point, um, it's pretty established that uh, virtually everyone can, uh, uh, virtually everyone can uh, cash in on. Uh, on uh, the YouTube uh, advertising. Um, it's really tricky, though, using YouTube if you want to sell your own advertising. They've got minimum thresholds, and they 
uh, they demand a cut of it. So having someone else uh, host your video and you pay them for the bandwidth um, is kind of an easier way to uh, control your advertising revenue. And uh, it's you know they'll work with you to uh, customize the look and feel of your player. Uh, you know the actual uh, player of uh, what's uh, showing the video on your site uh, a little more than YouTube will. You know YouTube is a, a Google product and they're just um, this huge monolith. And if you're uh, you know if you're drawing um, 100 million views a month, they'll they'll work with you to whatever whatever capacity you need. But you know for the rest of us, we, we kind of have to have someone uh, a little smaller who can focus uh, a little more on our needs because because uh, uh, our revenue might might. You know, be a drop in the bucket for them, but it's um, uh, you know, it's not a drop in the ocean like it would be for YouTube. There's a, there are people out there. Um, uh, there's a series called What the Buck, uh, in, in which this guy Michael Buckley does uh, social commentary, a lot of a lot of celebrity stuff. But he makes his living solely based on making uh, daily videos for for YouTube. And um, I don't think he's got a, a house in Bel Air, but um, you know, I. I Relatively sure he's um, uh, he's not also panhandling, so it, it is absolutely possible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. So it is absolutely 100% possible to uh, um, put all of your videos through uh, through YouTube and just kind of um, uh, hope for the best until you're um, uh, big enough that you can uh, negotiate with them a little bit. Um, but uh, uh, you know, for the most part, it, it's really nice to be able to uh, customize and, and control your own advertising. Thanks, Tom. Uh, great, great advice about video hosting and how it works. We, we promised uh, webcast folks a little bit about content licensing. Uh, let's talk about stock photography just for a second. I know we've been talking about videos mostly, but uh, you can't just grab images. I think folks know that. You can create your own or license them. And, but you can also grab video. Uh, do you ever use stock video uh, you know, as, as part of B-rolls or as part of alternatives, or do you pretty much shoot it all yourself? We we have uh, we have in the past we um, I think we've bought oh yeah you've got iStock right here uh, we've uh, bought um, uh, some stock video off of uh, iStock I, I, it was for definitely for a, a, a scripted style video and I, I think we wanted um, uh, I think we wanted something zany like uh, uh, like you always see that uh, um, this wasn't it exactly but it was definitely something like that old black and white footage of the um, of the biplane that's got another five wings stacked on top of it crashing. You know, we, we kind of yeah. wanted something like yeah. that. And yeah. We weren't going to be able to, there's you know, no, no chance of us uh, being able to shoot that ourselves. Um, another big thing, and we use a, a company um, called Killer Tracks, is licensing um, audio. Uh, this, this, is both be, uh, this is both for uh, sound effects and for uh, music for the, the score. Okay, so sound. You can also grab sound. I think that yeah. makes a lot of sense, too. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm willing to, bet, to yeah. think about Yeah, I'm willing to bet iStock and Shutterstock uh, and Artsbeat Arts uh, sell, uh, sell music and sound effects, too. I, I, I can't, uh, I can't uh, verify that. But. Good. That's a great point. Uh, so, folks, you can Google all for all for stock sound in addition to stock photography and video. Uh, great point. Great point. Uh, you know, the, the next part uh, of this, I've got some things having to do with resources that you can go out and grab top 10 tips for creating web-ready video, uh, and how to get a, a web-ready video going, tutorial, web-ready media file, things like this. Uh, these are just resources that um, I want to point out. Uh, so Stephen, uh, Tom, what other points would you like to make? We have about five minutes left in the webcast. What other things I, would you yeah, I um, it, it, uh, I feel like um, uh, when you're uh, creating a um, video for the first time, it's going to be a lot of um, uh, trial and error. Um, and, and so it's like if, even if you're just shooting an interview, we we tend to um, we tend to uh, overshoot as uh, as much as we've got uh, time for. Uh, you know, irrespective of how much time we have scheduled for a, for a shoot, uh, we almost always use uh, either that amount of time or or more just so that we have everything. Uh, and then also expect uh, the edit process to take a, a very long time. Um, even if you know exactly what you want, it, uh, sometimes there's um, uh, there's hiccups or uh, or a little bit of a back and forth process between um, your your first cut and your final cut. Okay, so take that time for editing. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, you know, budget, budget budget twice as much time at least as you think you'll need for editing. At least twice as much. Okay. 
actually, actually, Tom, there's a there's a question that just popped up in the in in the question box from the from the group, and and it was actually, I mean, I guess we must think alike or something, because I was going to ask about resolution, and and okay. when you're when you're producing for web content, uh, what what type of of resolution is is kind of the target aim or or yeah we. I mean, uh, I, I, yeah, we try to max it out, uh, and this is probably um, a big part of why the edit process may, might take so long. But um, uh, in, in general, we uh, want to uh, uh, cut everything as, as big uh, as humanly possible. So we'll, we'll try to, um, uh, I think our, our general uh, uh, specifics for uh, uh, exporting video is we'll almost always make it um, uh, 12 data by 720 in size, and then I think a minimum of... Um, 720 in resolution. Let me uh, look at my uh, text specs real quick. Um, yeah, it looks like we do a minimum of, uh, uh, generally a minimum of um, 720 re resolution and, and try to, um, uh, and also as far as export settings go, um, you kind of want to maximize your audio also and make sure that's in stereo. Okay. Yeah. So okay. yeah. So yeah. So uh, HD. Yeah. HD. Um, uh, HD. Uh, Sixteen by nine ratio is, is uh, you know, so 1280 by 720 is um, is our, our general uh, exporting setting. And unless we need something um, uh, kind of fast and dirty, then we'll we'll uh, downgrade it kind of uh, based on what we need. What about what about file size as far as delivery for that over the web? Is is because to do it at the higher resolutions. Yeah, uh, yeah you. Uh, yeah, if a video is um, uh, over three minutes at, at that resolution, it's going to be at least 100 megs. Um, so that that'll um, uh, uh, kind of take a little bit of not not a tremendous amount of time, but a little bit of time to uh, upload. Uh, you know, if you're uploading it to YouTube or, or wherever you're uploading it, or if you're um, uploading it to a, a file sharing site. So that, that's kind of one thing to keep in mind. So if we're the early cuts that we do is something if we need someone to uh, to look through to make sure um, we got everything or don't have too much or people's names are spelled right or that kind of thing. We'll, we'll do uh, a much, much, much lower uh, resolu uh, quality resolution. Okay. Cool. Cool. There's a question uh, for yeah. the audience. Uh, Tom, oh, sorry, Tom. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, originally, originally YouTube did have a, um, uh, a problem with, uh, with file size. Um, so they became um, uh, so the original videos that went up on YouTube. Uh, if you look back at them, aren't aren't, um, aren't really as uh, uh, good in terms of resolution as they are now. But uh, the uh, bandwidth is practically uh, practically free for those guys. So they, um, you know, you can put up um, uh, feature length um, movies now, and it, it's not really too much of a hardship. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What was the question, James? Oh yeah, it was a question about going back to the idea of um, taking voice from the uh, speaker. So imagine you have video and you have voice. Yeah. Is there a software that will automatically create, uh, that will grab text and create a closed caption piece from the voice of the speaker? This is a question from the audience. Is there, there a software uh, that will, oh, go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, I think there is. It's, um, you know, as you can imagine, I, oh man, I'm, I really apologize, guys. I'm totally slipping on the um, name of the one we've uh, used in the past. A as you can imagine, um, you know, just like Siri, it's um, it's not um, it's not uh, exceptionally accurate yet. If, if you need a um, really really accurate transcript of something, there are um, really cheap. I, you'll have to Google it. There are really cheap um, ways to outsource that. Um, uh, you know, I, I get some um, uh, a shop in in Bangalore or something to um, uh, to uh, go through your video and and painstakingly uh, uh, type it out. It's uh, oddly enough not uh, not that tremendously expensive if you absolutely need a, a perfect transcript. Uh, otherwise, there are a couple services out there that'll do a 90% job. James, I've I've actually used uh, Camtasia for for doing the for doing, doing huh. yeah for doing my video production and oh, right. and it's it's got a tool that's that's built in there where it will it will capture the audio and turn it to transcript. Oh great! And then I, I guess you just have to do your best to uh, go through and. Uh, Make sure that that uh, that transcript uh, uh, is accurate, I suppose, and just uh, correct where you can, right? Right, right, okay, exactly. Cool. And then, and then, 
there, there's, there's other times um, where I know what we've done is, is they played the recording via, uh, and, and then captured it. Um, um, I'm trying to think of the, the tool um, that they used. You know, one of those uh, software applications where you talk into it and it, it, it turns into a transcript for you. Um, like dra like a, like naturally a speaking, message. naturally speaking. Yeah, the, like dragon, dragon. naturally speaking. Yeah. And we'll yeah. do it that right. way and then put the text in. Um, there, there's a, there's cool. a route of doing it that way as well. Great advice. Thank you very much. I think that answers, uh, I think that pretty much answers all the questions that I've seen. Have you seen any other questions, folks? Uh, Lisa, uh, you, know, you know, we're over time just a little bit, but I want to make sure we, we answer questions. There was a question earlier talking about the idea of gamification uh, and uh, video. Um, uh, interesting, it was basically talking about game style interactive video. Have you done anything along that, those lines or uh, Tom, when it comes to creating video for games, you know, as as they have introductions nowadays, where videos seem, uh, excuse me, games seem to be crossing the line between a movie and a video. Uh, no, we for, uh, for the most part we're um, uh, uh, for the most part our our video uh, product is pretty one, uh, one way in its communication. Sure, that's what I figured. Yeah, all right. but that's all the questions that uh, that we have. Uh, uh, to answer as far as I can tell. Tom, I want to thank you very, very much for the time oh, that you spent me, with us. It oh, was uh, very informative. And uh, Stephen, thanks again so much. Everybody, thank you so much for attending the webinar. And uh, Tom, once again, uh, very much appreciate your time. Hope to uh, see you soon next time, I, uh, next time we head back to Manhattan. Hope to see you there. Yeah, excellent. We'll do. All right. Thanks. Thanks, thanks Tom. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.